Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Steve Hoy. Yes, it's your Liverpool news update on a glorious Monday afternoon here in Liverpool. Hope you're well wherever you're tuning in from. Yeah, I've got loads actually to speak about, considering that the transfer window is now officially closed, at least in terms of Bayern players. Obviously, the Saudi Arabian window is very much still open, we think, until Thursday. That's what we're going with. Um, so, obviously, the Salah situation rumbles on. We'll speak about that later. Got a little bit of injury news surrounding Ibu Kanate, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Kay Gordon. Going to touch upon Liverpool's Ryan Gravenberch as well and his decision to pull out of playing for the Netherlands under-21 squad later this week as well. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Hope we're all still in a very pleasant mood after the Reds hammered Aston Villa yesterday. I was delighted to have the guys in before Ian and John on the final way. Joe talk all about it. And my mood has not changed since. Big old smile on my face heading into a wonderful summer. Um, let me know, guys, if you're watching along live. Do get involved, use the live chat, I'll bring your comments up throughout the show. If you're watching and you're one of our Red Men Plus legends, if you use the Discord chat, I can bring up your comments as well. So get involved there and thereabouts. First of all, just getting straight on it. Um, <laughs> Leah Gatt says, oh no, you're on time. Does that mean bad news? No, actually, yeah, we was on time. I was in the studio bright and early today. Um, sometimes we're scrambling around for stuff, but actually I was, I was here on time. Producer Ryan had everything set up immaculately. So that's why I want Tyler. No, I don't think there's any bad news, although there's a little bit, of, I suppose, a little bit in terms of the injury stuff, but we'll, um, we'll hopefully avoid too many serious things there. Thanks very much for everyone getting involved. Like I say, I'll start with the first story then. And then I'll bring this up on the screen very, very shortly. It is about Ibu Kanate. Oh, look at that. Sorry, mate. There you go. The, this is Anfield's, um, what's the word? Cookies policy aside. Thanks to the guys there for, for getting this news. But yeah, as he said, after a surprise call while injured, Ibu Kanate has now been cut from the France squad this month with the nature of his injury explained. Go down past all the adverts. Um, let's have a look. Didier Deschamps said he was supposed to be available, but it turns out he's not. Um, and he's now having insufficiently recovered, is the word. Get rid of that. Insufficiently recovered. Um, he's now being replaced by Jean-Claire Tabido. So uh, yeah, basically, Ibu Kanate, of course, missed the game Um against Newcastle with injury. He missed the Aston Villa game with injury. He was called up to the French squad. They believed that they could have him um, in part of their squad for the upcoming international break. It, he wasn't ready. or he's not, I don't know if that means there's a setback. Maybe they just didn't believe Liverpool. I don't know. But either way, he's now been pulled out of the of the squad. So France play, uh, excuse me, they've got a Euro qualifier against the Republic of Ireland um, and a friendly game against Germany. He was meant to join up with the squad today. Um, to, obviously, sometimes, even when players are injured, their teams want to get a little look at the scans or get a little update on it, but they've decided he isn't no, he isn't ready enough to be involved. So, Ibu Kanate won't be playing for France against Ireland and he won't be playing for France against Germany down the line. Um, Auto Tomato, good name. I mean, you say tomato, I'm going to say tomato. Um, it says, at least we have the break now to recover from any injuries. And yeah, Ibu gets an extra week. There's no there's no more Liverpool games for a couple of weeks. Hopefully, he's back in time for that Wolves game. Or what I would say is that, um, you know, there's no guarantee of that. Uh, especially now that he's not, he's not. you know, France don't think he's available to play either the game this week. What does that mean in terms of his recovery time for that Wolverhampton Wonder game? Who knows? But Liverpool's next game, of course, is Wolves. Early kick-off just after the international break, just like we always like. Um, Tom says he's a great defender, but he does have a lot of injuries. And yeah, you are right. I'm a big Ibu fan, and there's no problem. Listen, he has the odd hiccup here and there, all young centre-backs do. But for the most part, we're all big Ibu Kanate fans. But I... It is a you know your best ability is your availability, um, and at the moment I still think we're at a point where he does pick up injuries, he picks up frequent injuries. You know I don't think he's ever played like ten games on the run or been able to be fit for selection for ten games on the run, which in itself is an issue. So you are right, he is he does have a lot of injury issues. Now thankfully, Joe Gomez and Joel Matip the other day stepped in and played really really well. Um, uh, AWSC makes a point though, Matip, Gomez and Canate are all injury prone and couldn't last long as they threw it. And that's the point, Matip and Gomez have picked up injuries too. To be fair to Joe Gomez, his have been, his have been more serious injuries really, more often than not, unfortunately for him. You know, the ones that you can't really avoid, it's the, it's the little muscle injuries. Sometimes that's what Ibu team tends to get. John Matip gets them as well. It's not ideal. It's not their fault. It's nothing they do. It's just a fact. Some players just get those more than others. And you are right. Liverpool have got three, um, three centre backs there who've all missed a significant amount of time. So, um, want to keep an eye on. Looking at that, um, looking at the injury situation, and obviously not only looking at that Wolves game. 
Ibu Kanata, I'm guessing there's still a doubt given the fact that um, he's now out of the uh, the France squad. Jurgen Klopp spoke about Trent Alexander-Arnold. Obviously, he was um, substituted during that win against Aston Villa. Probably the one blip on the day, really. Jurgen said it was almost a perfect day other than Trent's injury, and I, I would tend to agree with him. Now, speaking after the game, Jurgen told the reporters... Um, I'm not exactly sure what it was. It was his hamstring, but it, it is not too serious. That was his opinion. We have to wait for the scan. Now, Trent Alexander-Arnold is at time recording, still due to join up with the England national team. They've got fixtures this week, and it was interesting. First of all, they listed them as a midfielder in the, in the squad list, not a, a defender, which was interesting. They play Scotland on the 22nd. Is that right? Um, I might be wrong on that. Actually, no, I do apologise. That's the women's team. The, 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 they, it's the men's team he's playing for. It's Ukraine, sorry, on the 9th, and then Scotland on the 12th, rather. So he's got five days until that Ukraine game, and then a fair the, what, three or four days after that to, um, to play Scotland. You've got, to, you've got to think at this point in time, the wise decision would be to take Trent out of those. Now, he'll be gutted about that, of course he will. But And I, and I know the Ukraine game, of course, is a Euro qualifier. Um but the people should err on the side of the caution. Just going down to the England group, really, and I think, where is it? Where are they? Where are they? England are doing quite well in the qualifiers, I think, so far, so there's no real... Mm, I don't know, actually. That, it's this stupid Nations League, and I don't even know how that thing works. But the the, the Europa games, England have played for 1-4. You think that... and you, You'd fancy them. Like Ukraine are their nearest rivals in that group stage, of course. Was Trent going to play anyway? I don't know. Like it doesn't feel like he's very much first choice for England. He was there, at, 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 so I don't know. It feels like the wise decision would be for for England to pull Trent Alexander Arnold out, or indeed he has to drop out. Um, and time will tell if he's fit for Wolves. Hamstrings. That is a, that is a um, that is a worry. Is he going to be back in two weeks from a from a hamstring? Now again, it, it just depends what it was. Again, yeah, more will be revealed soon enough. I'm sure once this scan and stuff's completed, but I think it's worth mentioning that there is a bit of a concern about it. Um, and especially with Van Dijk being, um, sorry, Van Dijk's ban potentially being expanded. We don't know where we're up to with that one yet, of course. He was charged after his reaction to his red card. Ibu Kanate is still an issue as well. So Liverpool could be going to Wolves away undercooked. It's a long way away and we don't really know that either way. Canate could be fit, Trent could be fit. Van Dijk might not get the ban extended. So all, these are all lots of but and maybes. But there is a world where Liverpool are without all three of those players and then they've got decisions to make uh, in terms of centre-back. Does Gerald Kwanza play with Joe Gomez going to right-back? Do they find someone else who can go and play right-back? Obviously, Conor Bradley's injured as well. So there are a couple of questions surrounding that Wolves game. There's plenty of time to get the answers to it, but there is a world where all three of those lads are out. Having loaned Nat Phillips to Celtic as well, Liverpool could be undercooked or underhanded or, or shorter numbers for that Wolves game, but it is just worth mentioning. We're, wait, we're awaiting the details of Trent's scan, but yeah, uh, Das Speed 19 said is Trent's injured. Jürgen said he felt his hamstring, and that's why they took him off. He didn't think it was too serious, maybe a bit of a precaution. And which was the wise decision at the time. Liverpool were comfortable in the game at that point, but it is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Like I say, I always worry around hamstrings. I always worry around hamstrings. Um, let's see, Verge got a one-game extra. He's missing the wall. I don't... Yeah, any news on the Verge or ban? As far as I'm aware, I don't think there's been anything on that yet. I mean, I, 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 have, been, I have been keeping an eye on and no one's told me any different. But he was charged with his reaction um, to... Obviously, he's sending off against Newcastle. Now, the, the, the game, the ban itself was a game. That was the game that we've just played. We're still waiting to hear about anything on the on the update. Just checking now, and nobody's um, reporting any differently. So we're still waiting. He has been charged. We'll see how long that charge takes. But there is a chance his, uh, his ban could be extended. We're still waiting. We don't know. Um, Ireland says so. Is he only out for one more game, or is he out for three more? As it stands, he's not suspended anymore. His original ban was one game. However, he was charged by the FA with his reaction. He had till Friday to respond to that charge. They, they haven't made a decision yet. There is an option that he could fine him. They could ban him. They could extend his ban. And listen, the clamping down on a boost towards referees and where's the referees? So I wouldn't be shocked if they made an example of this kind of thing. Who better to make an example of than the captain of Liverpool Football Club that shows around the league how serious you are about your... If, if they're serious on this clampdown of talking to refs and whatever, there's an option there. But at time recording, there's no um, official word on the Van Dyke thing. Moving on then, let's carry on. Um, want to talk about maybe a po bit of positive injury news. It's been a long old time, really, since anyone spoke about young K Gordon. 
Um, you got to remember, it wasn't that long ago that Kay Gordon was starting a Carabao Cup semi-final for Liverpool against Arsenal. Since then, he's had a torrid 18, 19 months. He hasn't played the first a game for 19 months, but at the weekend, and again, the guys over at this is Anfield have reported he played his first game for 19 months. He was part of it. It was a heavy defeat for Liverpool's under-21s. They got beat 4-1 by Middlesbrough. It didn't go too well for the young Reds, but he did manage to get himself back on. He hasn't been used uh, since February 2022. Um, yeah, it, it, obviously it's in, he didn't get on the bench, he, so he didn't get off the bench in the in the cup win against Cardiff. He played for the under twenty ones against Leeds under twenty ones back in twenty twenty two, and he hasn't been able to get out of the treatment room since. He, um, it was to do with an issue with his pelvis. There was reports that it was to do with his growing and his, and that kind of stuff. Which young, young that hap, which can happen rather to young lads. Um, but really, really delighted to see K Gordon back. There's been a lot of hype. Uh, about young players, Ben Doak's the new game, the new name. But it's not, listen, K Gordon's only eighteen. He played fifteen minutes the other day. I mean, the game was already gone at this point. It was the middle of probably three 0 up, but he ends up playing twenty five minutes. Obviously, with the stoppage time going on, um, which is really really great news. He's probably became a little bit of a forgotten man, K Gordon. But like I say, what Ben Doak was thought of now, or his thought of K Gordon was that you know he's a very young lad. He's he's a he's a he's a kid. You know, he's 16, 17 years old. He was in and around Liverpool's first team. So, really good news to see Kate Gordon back. I don't think we'll be seeing him in the Liverpool first team for a while. He needs to go and get some minutes and play a lot of footy for the under-21s and get that, you know, he's missed a year of his career now. He needs to get back on track. But it's worth, I think it was really worth mentioning, you know, 19 months out for a young player, it must have been hugely frustrating for him. So, fingers crossed, um, he can stay fit, get back on the go. And listen, get himself pushing towards that first team in the future. Ben Doak is currently the sixth option. Can Kate Gordon take that spot? He's in theory ahead of him in the age range and in, in, in the pecking order, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, different types of players, of course, but really, really, really delighted to see Kate Gordon back, and I'm sure you guys are all as well. Um, got Abby Nash has any Thiago injury update? I think that says injury anyway. Um, Jürgen said he had a setback before the Aston Villa game. The plan is that he's going to be back for the Wolves game. But they had to they had to hold him back an extra few days. So that's that's the update on on Thiago. They called it a minor setback, but it made them not available at this point. Abinash, um, I'm just seeing Thiago as the ultimate luxury player now. I've got a theory what Liverpool could do with Thiago, um, and it might not be the most popular in terms of the ability of the player because I get it, he's brilliant and you'd want him in the team. I think there's a world where you can put Thiago in your Europa League side for the for, at least for the early start of the season. The games, in theory, should be less intense than Premier League games. Listen, I'm not saying that any, you know, these, these teams will all qualify for Europe. They're no mugs. But the, in general terms, European games don't tend to be as intense anyway, especially Europa League games. I've got a theory that when he comes back, you could ease Thiago back in, be, basically make him the Thursday night team. He could even be the captain of that team if he needs to be, because I wouldn't be putting Van Dijk or Trent Alexander-Arnold in too many of those games. Maybe that's one thing you can do. You can look after Thiago, get him playing again, because Liverpool needs him. He's brilliant when he's back. Ease him in by putting him in the Europa League team. He can lead, like, captain that team if he wants to. And then sooner down the line, when he's got games under his belt and showing a resiliency, you throw him back in. At this moment in time, he will find it hard to get in Liverpool's team. But there's no doubt about it when Thiago's fit and fired. He's a brilliant footballer, absolute superb footballer. But Liverpool have got Sobers like, they've obviously got McCallis there. They've just signed Ryan Gravenberch as well. They've got options in the field, Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones. Obviously, Endo is a DM, Stefan Pachetti. So there isn't, at this point, there isn't a reliance on Thiago to be fit, which is, which is a, a good thing in terms of depth of the squad. But for me, I think... Um, I think that would be the way I'd go about it. But as it stands, the aim is to get him back in the squad for the Wolves game. Whether he, whether that is to, it proves to be the case, I don't know. Um, moving on to our next story, interesting one. This, this is all about Liverpool's latest signing, Ryan Gravenberch. Again, the this is Anfield lads have uh, done a great job reporting this uh, for us. But Ryan Gravenberch will not be joining up with the Netherlands under twenty one squad as he bids to settle into life at. Anfield. So yeah, Gavin Birch had been called up to the Netherlands under-21 squad. He's asked, can he withdraw? Obviously, he completed a deadline. They moved to Liverpool um, and he basically wants to get his life in order. And I'd, I'd 
completely understand that he's got to find somewhere to live, he's got to find all that kind of stuff, and this is a perfect chance for him to do it. So he's going to spend the break at Liverpool. He'll be training with his new teammates, or at least the ones who haven't gone away on international duty. So you're looking at the likes of, again, Joel Matip and Joe Gomez. They'll be hanging around and a few others as well. Um, but more importantly, I think it gives him a chance to get, to get his life sorted. And that must be really difficult. Like I say, it was a very... He only, he only uh, arrived in, on the, at the club officially on deadline day. His flight got cancelled. He flew in on the morning of deadline day, signed the contract, done the paperwork, sat on an exercise bike and all that. But now he's he's got a few days off where he doesn't have to worry. I wonder if he'd been called up to the Netherlands first team, it, would he have made this decision? But the fact is the under-21s, I know he was there for the Euros as well. He's probably got his eye on being in the proper full international Dutch squad. I can understand why he's not at the moment. He hasn't played enough football for them. Um, for Bayern Munich, but I, I get it. I, 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 with all due respect, I don't think he needs to be playing under 21s football just yet. The minutes under his belt might have done him some good. He hasn't played a lot of action this year, but I think being around Liverpool, being around the training ground, being around the city, and just getting used to his new environment, I think this two this little two week break is a perfect opportunity for him to get him get his life sorted, get out the hotel, get off Virgil van Dijk's couch or whatever he's kipping, and get his life sorted. Him and his, his amazing family. I thought the pictures that when he signed the pictures of his family were fantastic, and you can see how much it meant to all of them. Um, so, fair play to Ryan Gravenberch. He's decided not to play for the Netherlands under 21s. He's going to try and get himself really, really fully settled in and acclimatised to Liverpool. I'm looking forward to him. Um, I was a big fan of him at Ajax when he left. I, w- I wasn't surprised that Bayern Munich took the plunge to sign him. It just hasn't worked out. I don't think you can always blame the player for that. There's always reasons why transfers don't work. Um, and I said a few weeks ago on Twitter, not a few days ago, um, I wonder if... Um, a little bit of Coutinho, a little bit of Sturridge, in that basically just because it didn't work at one other you know high level club doesn't mean it can't it can't work here. The pool could get the reap the rewards. That he seems eager to have him. He was on the list for a long, long time. So um, it does feel like he's very highly thought of, and hopefully, like I say, having a couple of weeks to settle, get himself sorted, get himself on the bench at least for that Wolves game, and we can start seeing the real best of Ryan Gravenberch in the Liverpool shirt. There's games coming up in September, thick and fast. The Europa League starts, the Carabao Cup starts, there's Premier League games as well. So there's ample opportunity for him to get himself fit and firing ahead of those games and get himself uh, get himself in that red shirt. So for me, I think it's a really wise, mature decision of him. And fair play for the Netherlands under 21s for letting him do that as well. They didn't have to do that. They've chosen to allow him to. So I think that's a really good decision on all halves, on all behalfs. Um, right then, unfortunately, we have to talk about Mo Salah. Uh, it's going to be that week. It's going to be that way all week until the Saudi Arabian window shuts, which we think is on Thursday. There's been a bit of confusion about that, but most outlets now tend to agree. It's the the seventh uh, Thursday, the seventh. Uh, the, Mo, the, the most Salah to Saudi watch, we'll call this one. Um, the, the latest update on it, really, Jürgen Klopp has asked about it again after Liverpool's win over Aston Villa. He asked him, does he expect Liverpool to stick to their not-for-sale stance regarding Salah? And he based, the reply was very, very simple. It was a yes. He said there's been no talk. He hasn't had to deal with it. Salah hasn't mentioned it. It hasn't been brought up once. Um, Dominic Sobersly was speaking to the BBC and he claimed that... Um, he said that Salah wants to stay. He's told his teammates he's going to stay. Andy Robbo kind of said the same thing in his post-game comments as well. So all the noises out of Liverpool are that there's no intention for Mohamed Salah to leave. Time will tell if a bid comes in and it's a massive bid, there might be a decision to make. But Liverpool's policy and Jürgen Klopp's policy, as far as he and, and all the players seem to be concerned, is that there is nothing to do, nothing happening here and that Mo Salah will not be sold this summer. And that has to be the right decision. I understand... There might be a, there's a massive number, and he might even want to go. He, I don't know if he does. He might, he might not. He might want to go there. He might want to go and live in Saudi Arabia. He might want to get the 1.5 million pounds a week that he's reportedly being offered in terms of salary. But Liverpool just, it's all well and good having 200, 250 million pounds in your bank. 200, 250 million pounds isn't aren't gonna, isn't going to score goals until January. Simple as that. He might be able to spend it in January. But you know, you could put a big pile of cash on the right wing if you want, but I don't think you know it's going to score many goals. Um, Matty Cash scored a goal the other, the other day, an own goal, but I don't think an actual, an actual pile of cash is going to do anything. It also severely weakens Liverpool's hands in any negotiations. There's some questions flying in about potential replacements. Um, it's probably a little bit too early for that at this stage. Um, but if Liverpool sell Mo Salah now, a they're short-handed for the for the massive run between now and January after a really fine start to the season. B, the the feel-good factor around the club 
just oh, instantly dies. Like that just all goes away. We're all in buoyant mood. Obviously, the three wins on the spin, the signings that we've made, Liverpool look good again. The kit looks fantastic. They look like a real side again. They just don't want to get themselves in the point where they're there. Um, so, and then thirdly, there's two hundred million pounds in your back pocket. Brilliant. Every club you're trying to buy replacements off. No, you've got two hundred million pounds to spend in your back pocket, and you're trying to replace Mo Salah. It makes no sense. There could be a way where you could shake hands now and say, "Listen, you can go next summer." All parties agree, jobs are good. And you don't have to announce it. You can you can go down the Naby Keita route and announce it and say, "Listen, he's coming next year," or you can just do it under the table, nod and a wink. We know what's happening here. We're all aware of what's going on. We'll we'll deal with it in a year's time. That feels like the best solution. It just makes no sense for now. And listen, Jürgen's adamant that the club are, are going to keep him. There's no there's no decision to make. Um, and I think it's the right one. So let's have a little look. M says, we should sell him anyway. He's going to be missing for AFCON. I mean, AFCON's in January. That's so far away. So yeah, sell him now. And he can't play in the September, October, November or December games. He misses half the season just because he's going to miss like two games in January. I think that's a, <laughs> a bit over the top. Um, Stevie wondered, if we sell him at this point, we're just forfeiting the whole season. What, does, what good does having 150 million in the bank do isn't right now? I tend to agree with you, mate. And also, if they want him that much, they'll come back for him next year. Now, is he worth less next year because he's down to his last year of a contract? Maybe a little bit. But say you lose 20, 30 million pounds, having Mo Salah for a year is worth more than the 20, 20, 30 million pounds you're going to get. So it's, it's an absolute no-brainer for me. Interesting enough, yeah, um, Amine Griffiths says, Salah recently tweeted his number 11 shirt. I think he's staying. I can bring you that tweet now. Um, I'll bring it up on the screen. What do we think that means? I wonder. I don't, what do we think it means? Is it a, is it a message? Is that Salah staying? Is it? I don't know. We're trying to we're trying to now interpret meanings from photographs with no words. That's where we're at with this transfer window. I have said a few times. Um, there's a very very easy way to stop this, and it's for most Salah to come out and say I'm not going. There's, his agents, Rami, could come out and say Mo's going nowhere. Because as much as adamant as Liverpool are that they're not selling him, if it came from that parties, those parties as well, this would all die. Now, listen, I'm not saying that they're enjoying the drama or they're enjoying the fuss, but it must be nice to be linked with all these teams, to be the main man. Deadline day on Friday, who was the one everyone was talking about? It was Mo Salah, a deal that wasn't happening, that was being rejected. Players were making moves, players were signing. Liverpool signed a player. Man United's goalkeeper, I think, the new goalkeeper arrived on the same day. And all anyone was talking about was Mohamed Salah. And that must be quite nice to, you know, from an eagle point of view. But there's a dead easy way to stop this. I don't think a, a cryptic picture of Mohamed Salah in the Liverpool shirt is his way of saying I'm staying. I don't I don't know. I don't believe that would be the case at all. Um, but that, that's how you could end this if they really wanted to. Whether they want to or not, I don't know. Does he want to leave? I don't know. No ideas. We're, we're all a little bit in the dark of it. But Liverpool's stance remains the same. Jürgen said that again. He's not for sale. I saw Richard Keyes tweeting that he think that you know he's been told via source in the Middle East that's going to be Salah's last game would be Villa. I, I I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. So I'm I'm not going to. Um, I'm not even. Going to, I'm going to presume at this point in time that Liverpool are going to be true to their word and they're not going to sell him. Um, Islam says, why not sell him for two hundred and go for Bowen or Cavascelli? Well. It's the, the transfer window shut, mate. That's the answer to that one. They, that's that is the answer. The people literally couldn't sign either of those players. If you want to have this discussion, like they did with Coutinho, where they agreed to sell Philly Coutinho early in the January window, but maybe that's an option to get to. But now it's just bollocks. Basically, there's just no way it can happen. You can't replace him, and he's he might be irreplaceable anyway. He's literally irreplaceable now because you can't buy no one. Um, so that's where we're at with that one. We've had a, I had a super chat there from M so but it looks like it's been retracted, so I can't bring that one up at the moment in time. We should just sell him and buy Bakaya, Bakaya Saka or Mbappe. Wow, who's near? Yeah, footy would be that. If only, if only, if only football was that simple, mate. I mean, Kavashkelia, yeah. Saka, yeah. Mbappe, yeah. I'm not having Jared Bowen as being Mohamed Salah's replacement, by the way. Um, not for me. Now, the only thing with Kavashkelia, I think he's a really good player. Doesn't really score enough goals. He is a very good winger, and you can change your team around. But Le Salah is a goal machine. Ten consecutive games now in the Premier League with a goal contribution. Bagged one the other day. Should have had an assist as well if um, if Darwin Nunes hasn't cocked that one up. Um, so it's it's going to be hard. Whoever Liverpool buy, I've seen someone here mentioning um, 
Rafa Leal, there's good players. There's really good players. Um, but they're not Mo Salah. If they wanted if they want to do a deal where they agree that this is Mo Salah's last season, um, okay. I wouldn't like it. I'll be gutted to see Mohamed Salah go. But at least Liverpool will have a year where they know we, who how, roughly how much money they're gonna to have to spend and who they want. They can spend a few months getting the right targets and they can start laying the groundwork for a transfer now. It's gonna be impossibly difficult to sign a, a replacement for Mohamed Salah. It's proven difficult to replace Sadio Mane. It looks like he might have got there with Luis Diaz. Roberto Firmino was aging a little bit. He might have got there with Gakpo, Nunes, Jota as, as, a, as a, a trio. It's going to be so hard to replace the goals and assists that Mohamed Salah um, that Mohamed Salah produces. He is just a constant goal machine. He's, he's a numbers machine. Fingers crossed that... Um, Nothing happens. We had the latest update. It's kind of the same as the last update. Jürgen he even said he never has to think about it until he goes to a press conference and people ask him. So he's adamant. Now, at this stage, if FSG sold him now and Liverpool sold him, I mean, the man, it's going to not look great on the manager. If Mo Salah comes out um, and says he wants to go, that's a different kettle of fish and we, Liverpool would have to react to it. Philip Coutinho did the same and he didn't sell him. So there is precedent there. Um M there, so with his super chat, is that, is that gonna come up? Oh, we're there with it, wrong one. Have I got it? Is it coming up? There it is. Yeah, extending for two years, we look like we're taking off. That is the other option. Like Liverpool could just give him a new contract if they really wanted to. Um, whether they want to extend him, whether he would be interested, I don't know. Now we're not gonna be able to offer the one point five million pound a week um, that that the Saudi Arabians can see to offer him, but. That is an option. We're always presuming this could be Mo Salah's last year. There's no guarantee. He's under contract for two more this year and next year. So no guarantees at all. But I, I see the point. Everyone's just presuming it's now or next summer. Might not have to be. It might not have to be at all. Harry Kane went through this with, with Spurs. You know, he was getting sold every summer for three years before he was eventually sold. This really is the first time there's been any real massive noise about Salah going. Um, so it, it, it could be that they don't. It could be a couple of seasons. They could do more. Harry Kane signed a new contract at Tottenham at one point before he's eventually was sold to, to Bayern Munich. So there's plenty of time in this. But for me, um, yeah, fingers crossed. Salah stays. That's what we're looking for. Salah stays. Right then, guys, going to start wrapping up there. Thank you so much for joining me for today's show. Thank you for getting involved. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you're watching this post, like I say, use your comment section below to have your thoughts on everything we've discussed there. If you want to head over to redmenplus.com for even more content, I mentioned earlier about the final word show. That is out now. An hour recap of Liverpool 3, Aston Villa 0. We've got some Ryan Gravenberch content on there as well. Dan has literally just been speaking to a few different people. I think we had an Ajax fan on this morning. He's got, I think he's got former coaches and all that lined up. So if you want to head over to redmenplus.com for even even more Liverpool content, sign up over there and you'll get that all in your eyes and in your ears. Thank you very much for joining this update, Liverpool News update. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you all down the line. See you later. Hey, thank you so much for watching the show. You're amazing. And if you want to signify your legendary status, then head over to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. Not only you get all of the great video and podcast content, you'll also be entered into our monthly prize draw for great signed Liverpool gear. And you'll get access to our Discord as well, full of amazing Liverpool support and human beings. Head to redmenplus.com and join as a legend tier today.